In today's video, I'm going to take this thrifted cabinet and turn it into something useful for my home decor. So here we go. I purchased this cabinet about a year and a half ago at an indoor garage sale down in St. Peter, Minnesota. I think I paid about $5 for it. It's gotten a little dusty sitting around my house, so I'm just gonna clean it up with my spick and span. This will also ensure that there's nothing on the surface that will keep my paint from adhering. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this hardware so I can paint the cabinet a little more easily. I'm using my Black & Decker battery operated drill driver to remove the screws and take the door off because it will be a lot easier to paint with the door off. I need to be really careful not to lose the screws because they are so tiny. I wanna interject this into my video before I go on. So what I didn't realize is that that hardware keeps the whole cabinet together. So if you take this off, which I don't want to do again, basically it all falls apart. These are just little plywood inserts. And so I will be putting at least some of the hardware back on, at least the little uh, end finials. I don't know if I'll do the crossbar, we'll see. But need to have that so that the whole thing stays together. So pro tip, if you decide to flip a cabinet like this, because I know I see these pretty frequently, keep in mind that hardware might be keeping the whole thing together. Now comes the fun part. I'm going to do a base coat of chalk paint because it goes on really well and I don't have to do any surface prep. I'm using one of my favorite brushes. It's the Wooster Shortcuts brush and you can buy them at Home Depot. Interjecting, look at why hubby just brought me Dunkin'. I am not sponsored, but wow, I love Dunkin' coffee. And we recently got Dunkin' in Minnesota, like within the last year and a half. Woo love it. Now that my chalk paint based coat is dry, I can use this latex paint. I picked up four different gray latex paints at a garage sale last year or the year before for 25 cents a piece. They are Sherwin-Williams colors. This one is actually a popular color called Repose Gray. That's what I'm going to use for my top coat. You'll notice I have now switched to a foam brush. I really like foam brushes for latex paint or a foam roller. I would have used a foam roller, but I couldn't find one. <laughs> I think I need more of the roller pads. And then for all the little crevices, I'm just using a little Dollar Tree brush. I think they come in like packs of three. And this is really going to be like a one use brush. I probably won't try to wash it out and keep it because the bristles on these do kind of come out, but they do a good job in all the little nooks and crannies. Okay, it's actually the next day because I've been working on this project through the weekend. This is my painting sweatshirt. I do have another t-shirt under it. So if you're like, why is she still wearing the same shirt? If it's the next day, that's why. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm going to take the camera down and show you. So this is after two coats and I haven't roughed it up yet. That's the next step. I'm going to use my little sander. A lot of you ask me about this. This is uh, my Black & Decker cordless sander. It's great for these little projects. And I got it in a three pack at the hardware store two Christmases ago, but there's something similar on Amazon. If I remember, and if it's still there, I will link it for you. So this is what I use to rough it up a little. Um, sometimes I'll use a wet rag method, but for I've because it's the next day, the paint is pretty well cured. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and sand it. And then I'm gonna do a little something special on the door, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But first I gotta do the roughing it up. So let's go ahead and get that done. 
So here is the top coat. I just wanted to show it to you before I rough it up. You can see the latex paint gave a really nice finish. The foam brush does a really great job. And you'll notice there is paint on the glass, but that's okay. I will take care of that later with a little razor blade. I'm being really careful around the glass because I want it to be roughed up on the door, but I want to make sure I don't break the glass. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, I want to add a little antique wax to it so it's not so bright gray and looking new because my idea with this, well, I'll tell you about what I'm going to do. Originally, I was going to take the glass out and put chicken wire. I thought that would be really cute, but then I was like, wait a second. So I actually made a decal with my Cricut I'll insert just a small bit of footage here of me weeding it, which was really, really a lot of weeding. If you're familiar with the Cricut process, you cut your vinyl out and then you actually have to take like all the extra pieces out. It took a while with this. So yeah, I made a decal and I thought, oh, I can make it like a little pie cabinet. Maybe that was hanging, you know, on a bakery wall. Maybe they put like little mini apple pies in here or something. And now it's being repurposed in my home for displaying my restaurant wear, which is actually what I'm going to use it for. So anyway, so I left the door with the glass and I'm going to put this decal on. We'll do that in a minute. I'll do that last because uh, I need to scrape all the stuff, all the extra paint off of here and clean it up so that I get a nice good, uh, adherence, adhesion, whatever you want to say, um, <laughs> of the decal to the glass. So, but first, before I do all that, I'm going to go ahead and just use my antique wax just to give it a little grime because, you know, if it was hanging in a bakery for years and years, it would be a little grimy. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, my tools, the way that I antique, I use the antique wax and then a rag and also a little glass of water. And so I basically like dampen my rag and get a little of the wax on there, wipe it on, kind of wipe it off, wipe on, wipe off. And yeah, so that's the method I use. Everyone has a different way of doing this, but that's what works for me. So I'm gonna dampen my rag. That, these are just little cotton rags. I got a pack of them at, hmm, I think it was at Home Depot when we were painting one of our spaces. So it's kind of, don't want too too much so I'm gonna kind of wipe some of it off on itself like that and then I'm just gonna kind of wipe it on and wipe it off just gives it a little bit of grime and you can make it heavier in some places than others but it's just so the paint doesn't look so fresh, you know. This is where the knob is going to go. So I'm gonna put a little extra there because you know, if a hand, if hands were grabbing here through the years, that's gonna get a little dirtier. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit because <clears throat> it just gets a little bit tacky when you do it. This is on latex paint, so we're good as far as like being sealed up and everything, but I just want it to dry and then I will come back and do the last step, which is, well, two steps, putting on the decal and then replacing our hardware. Because remember in the beginning of the video, I told you that even though um, I wasn't sure about the hardware, I'm putting it back because the thing will fall apart without it. I'm gonna leave it brass for now because I have been bringing more brass back into my house. I can always spray paint it once the spring hits. Can't spray paint here in Minnesota right now, it's too cold. Uh, but once the spring hits, I can always change it if I want. But for now, it's just going to be the brass that it already was. Everything is kind of cured. I'm gonna use my razor blade to take the excess paint off the door. Okay, 
Okay, the last big step, I'm gonna put my decal on. Those are just spots on the paper from when I was cleaning it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this last. Because the decal is so intricate and has so many thin spots, it really wanted to lift up with my with the backing that I was trying to take off. So I'm just using my little tool, my little yellow flat edge tool, to make sure that the decal stays on the transfer paper and doesn't come up with the backing that I'm pulling up. And I'm just going really, really slow and taking my time because I'd rather take my time than have to start the whole thing over and weed a whole new one if I wreck it. So better to just take a little extra time. I really wanna make sure I get it pretty well centered. So I'm getting up on my knees so that I can really see from above the door, make sure that I get it pretty well centered on the door. Yes. Oh, it looks so cute. I love it. It's assembled, full disclosure, I had to get Chris to help me because the screws are so tiny. So one of us had to hold it while the other one used the uh, driver to put the screws back in. So anyway, I'm gonna try to get this hung on the wall, but I love it, what an improvement. And I did not put these to, I could always fill these, but I mean, it's gonna hang on the wall. You won't really see those except if you're really tall. And I think Probably originally there were bars that went from here to here because these all have the whole sim similar holes to this. So without that bar, I really don't need the extra little thing doodad sticking up and these are the ones that hold it together. So if I ever really feel like it, I can always fill those holes and paint over them. But for now, I'm not gonna worry about it. Here it is, I love it, I'm so excited. This is an old thermostat, doesn't work. So we were limited by that. We have not taken our Christmas village down yet. This whole area is getting changed. These shelves are coming down. Different piece of furniture is going here. So there'll be a little more room, but oh my gosh. And my restaurant wear pieces, my red and white restaurant wear is gonna go in here, which I will show you in a minute, but I love it. I'm, I love it so much. I'm really happy. These are the pieces I wanna put in there. So I will get them all set up and then I will show you what it looks like. Okay, here it is all set up with my restaurant wear. And that's just a cool wooden bowl there. And there's room for me to add pieces. I don't collect a ton of it. I just pick up pieces when I see ones that I really like. I love this little gravy boat. And then I can always add pieces to the side. So I just put these things here for now because they kind of work with what's in there. So, And it's very sturdy, so that's really good. And I think it looks so much better than when we started. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this project. I know I did. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.